Today, I share with you the saying that everyone will gradually live from being sociable to becoming solitary. Sociability and solitude. These two seem contradictory. But in reality, they are not. When young, we choose to be sociable. Because we haven't experienced life in circles. Therefore, we must try it well. At a certain age, such as middle and late years, we will choose not to be sociable. Rarely interacting with strangers. This is because we have already experienced much and seen through everything in the world. When young, we love to call friends over. From time to time to eat and chat at home. Firstly, because at home, we are not constrained by the environment of restaurants and the conversation is freer. Secondly, it enhances the friendship between friends. Sometimes you visit someone else's house. Sometimes others come to your home. Gradually, the feelings deepen. Back then, we believed that sincerity between friends was a good thing. Such sincere people are now increasingly rare. When hypocrisy becomes the norm, ordinary people with genuine hearts will change their previous thoughts and ideas. As the saying goes, those who approach red become red, those who approach ink become black. In such a social environment, it is understandable that people's concepts of friendship change. Gradually, we no longer like others to visit our homes, harboring no expectations for others in our hearts. Feelings, relationships, almost all the same, since they are inherently hypocritical. Oldly, who is 50 this year, has gotten used to enjoying solitude. When he needs to stay at home, he does so. When he needs to go out for exercise, he goes out. Even if friends come to visit, they usually meet at a restaurant outside, rarely bringing them home. A relative of his wonders. You were so warm before, how have you become so indifferent now? Oldly says that at different ages, one's lifestyle changes, especially in old age. Having seen much, the mindset is different from when young, preferring quiet daily life, enjoying tea, gardening, or fish alone, or being with family to enjoy familial happiness. Gradually, he distanced himself from socializing, and his relationships with friends are no longer as close as when he was young, because those who seem to come and go frequently are often not true friends. Rather than being hypocritically polite, it's better to be fresh and free alone. Most elderly people's lives are like this. They have their own rhythm and habits. In old age, many people are also unwilling to visit others' homes easily. Because they feel that in old age, things are not as easy going. And it's not very convenient at others' homes. Sometimes visiting can bring some trouble to oneself. Therefore, try to visit others' homes as little as possible in old age. The main reasons are the following aspects. 1. Visiting is a form of disturbance. Each family's situation is different. In old age, most people cannot represent the whole family. Perhaps your friend, for face or other reasons, invites you over. You go happily. But it does not mean that your friend's family will welcome you. They might even feel that you are disturbing them. Uncle my next door says, I am careless and never think much. Once I saw a high school classmate in the community, only to find out that we lived in the same community. In my sixties, seeing a friend from youth, naturally very happy. The classmate invited Uncle Ma to his home for a few dishes and some drinks. Uncle Ma loves drinking, but lacked drinking buddies. So he was particularly happy to have a classmate to visit regularly. On weekends, he would bring a few dishes to his classmate's house. But his classmate's wife showed a strange expression upon seeing him. Uncle Ma didn't think much. Drank and left. 
In the following days, he visited his friend for drinks every few days. But after a few visits, his classmate said, Every weekend you come to drink. My wife and children have big opinions. They feel their life is disturbed. Uncle Mo realized that the initial invitation was just a polite remark. He took it seriously, thinking they really welcomed him. Two, frequent visits can cause trouble. In old age, the most feared is having nothing to do. Having someone to chat with is great. So, some elderly who get along well with their neighbors visit each other frequently to pass the time. Though it seems like such days are much richer. Frequent visits might not be a good thing. Because with many people, many words. Gathering together might result in saying something inappropriate. Causing unnecessary trouble and disputes in life. Ms. Wong upstairs says, I'd rather stay home alone watching dramas. Then visit others. Because Ms. Wong had conflicts with her daughter-in-law due to visits. Her son scolded her harshly. Ms. Wong is enthusiastic. After retirement, she dances in the square with some ladies from the community. On rainy days, they take turns visiting each other's homes to chat and eat. Once at Ms. Lee's home, someone started talking about relationships with daughters-in-law. Ms. Wong mentioned her daughter-in-law's lack of initiative at home, and how marrying an only child was a bit of a downside due to being spoiled. The remark was meant to be casual, but somehow, it reached her daughter-in-law's ears, becoming that Ms. Wong was very dissatisfied with her, and that her daughter-in-law had married above her station, living with her son and daughter-in-law. The situation became very awkward. She wanted to explain, but her daughter-in-law had a cold attitude, and her son scolded her for gossiping. Because of this, Ms. Wong felt visiting was not good. It's enough to dance together. Talk less about others. Afterward, go home. No need to get too close. Too many words might get twisted. 3. Different economic conditions can cause psychological imbalance. Even if living in the same community. Each family's situation is different. Some are better off. Some are worse off. If each stays at home, no problem arises. However, if two families with significant economic differences frequently visit each other, the wealthier one might show superiority, making the less wealthy one uncomfortable, creating a psychological gap. Even the elderly subconsciously compare. After all, everyone wants a better life. Visiting can lead to comparison and jealousy. Adding mental burden. Making it counterproductive. It's better to live one's own life. Neither visiting others easily nor inviting others over. Live in peace. We can observe during festive times. It becomes clear. People used to visit for New Year greetings. Now they prefer staying home, sleeping, and browsing phones. Have people lost interest in traditional celebrations? Not really. Just life is too exhausting. And there's no genuine emotion between people. Visiting and socializing become meaningless. Unless life slows down. And people's hearts return to tranquility. Life's pace will not slow, only quicken. Making solitude a preferred lifestyle. Many prefer solitude rather than interacting with others. When young, not understanding solitude, thinking it means having no friends, feeling embarrassed. Only now do we fully understand. Living well for oneself in a complex life is the greatest success. The colder life is, the warmer our love for family. Indifference to outsiders is fine, but be sincere with family. In old age, Contact with a few friends and family is unavoidable. But avoid visiting others' homes. If wanting to gather, find a place outside. 
lightening the physical burden, and avoiding mental stress. A win-win situation. No need for visiting and rushing to entertain, causing physical and family stress. In old age, hosting guests can be tiring or stressful, leading to many troubles. It's vital to learn to be alone, especially in old age, as people around gradually leave. Adapting to being alone helps face future challenges. Today's sharing ends here. Thank you for watching. If you like the Buddha Zen channel, don't forget to subscribe and share. Here, you will never be alone.